It is starting to be a beautiful sunny day here on the farm. Before I get too deep into this video, check out this shirt from Earth Angel Mushrooms. TR is going to be giving away some of these shirts. I'm going to leave a link to the video up here. You need to leave a comment on that video and then TR is going to be picking five winners. Whoever leave a comment on the video that he likes and he's going to be giving away five shirts if he gets up to 1500 subscribers. So I made that video last week. I think he's already at like 1200 something like that. So if you guys run over to his channel and subscribe today, I'm sure he'll put up a video and he's going to pick five winners. TR's channel is just right there. So make sure you leave a comment on that video and subscribe to TR at Earth Angel Mushrooms and you guys can win one of these awesome shirts. And thank you TR for sending me one. I always love mushroom t-shirts and this shirt rocks. Anyways guys, let's get into the video. I'm going to bring you into Greenhouse One. We are just starting our overwinter production. So I want to show you guys what that looks like and kind of my plan for March as we kind of head into April when we're looking to get our first harvest. So I'm just going to bring you guys into Greenhouse House one right here. This is the greenhouse that we didn't tarp the shelves. So we've had some fruitings kind of midwinter when it's warmed up. So this, this greenhouse is already starting to grow mushrooms again. And then this greenhouse we have darkened with a trucker tarp. So we're looking to let this remain dormant for a bit. We've been doing production in lab one and this lab is almost full. So then we're looking to get all of our overwinter production that's frozen in this lab into probably greenhouse two here. And we'll be doing that over the next week so that we can start filling this lab with new production, get this started uh, to be activated and get this lab warmed up so that we can continuously do production for this week. And then we're looking to probably activate greenhouse five. I don't really have too much room in uh, in my farm right now so kind of coming up with ways to to stagger production is really important. My restaurant clients are just starting to take stuff and they've been contacting me so I can slowly start getting my farm growing mushrooms but I, I don't want to be in a scenario where I get all three greenhouses fruiting mushrooms because it's probably going to be really difficult for me to move that this early on in the season. So staggering production is important. Uh, moving forward with the overwintering, if it's a success this year, we're going to be doing an extension to this lab and it's going to go all the way behind these greenhouses and lab two does have a door. So we'll be able to close this and let this get cold and then the, the lab behind there, we can use that to kind of get our season started. So I think if, if we like if we like the overwintering production in the lab to remain frozen and out of the sunlight so that the pins don't start, we'll be able to kind of close this lab off and let it become like a big refrigerator and then start production behind there, get those going, and then any of our second flush that we we started end of November and then let freeze in the greenhouses like greenhouse five and greenhouse one, we can kind of activate in March as as the season progresses. So that's kind of where we're at right now with this. Um, I just noticed that greenhouse one is starting to pin. So we've activated this, cleaned the, uh, the greenhouse out, just kind of the floor, cleaned the fan. I've opened the windows for air exchange. So I'm just gonna bring in there and kind of show you what's going on. So all of these blocks are going to fruit mushrooms. We have king oyster blocks that we've we've kind of scratched and we're on a couple shelves here. I've been using TR's method actually. He talks about in one of his videos how you want to get kind of right into the sides and lift it up and have the substrate be chunky. So you really have microclimates kind of throughout and then the king oysters are gonna kind of start popping in between the chunks of uh, substrate. And during peak summer, these blocks will dry out. So what we could probably even bring a uh, water hose and fill up these bags and kind of rehydrate them that way. But right now, uh, these bags have actually pretty good moisture, so I think they should be good. The strategy with our side fruiting oyster strains, we've taped up the holes with tuck tape 
and we did that in the winter and now the mushrooms are actually just starting to push through the tuck tape so I think we're just gonna kind of let that naturally happen uh, we'll show you a few here if I can find them so you can see they're just starting to push through and the tuck tape keeps the mycelium from drying out and then the mushrooms will push through as they want to just like that so that's been a really good strategy I think for this overwintering this is something new for us Let's see if we can find a few more I'm not sure where everything is right now oh there's one back there so this is just starting and these will probably take about three weeks everything grows really slow in the cold and as long as I keep the floor wet kind of as as it warms up then this should be fine our irrigation lines aren't turned on right now obviously because it's still cold outside we still do get freezing at night so everything's disconnected there so it's literally just throwing water on the floor this this greenhouse is sheltered from the morning sun with our lab so it 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 does remain high humid air inside the greenhouse and i'm only kind of worried about like mid-afternoon getting some water on the floor here but that should be enough to keep the environment suitable for mushrooms to grow and then we've opened up our back window for exhaust and our front window i've opened up just a little bit the, the air exchange in here is not as important because it is colder so we can uh, have a little bit less air exchange and the mushrooms are growing slower so they're not actually giving off as much CO2 and then once we have everything fruiting in here I can kind of make adjustments as needed so I already know that these uh, tree oysters are going to fruit the, uh, the king oysters um, this is something that I need to see how it's going to do for overwintering. I haven't really done too much of that. But king oysters do love cold. So really all I'm concerned about is that the substrate isn't dried out from being exposed. So that's why possibly uh, throwing some water in these bags maybe next week is maybe a good strategy. We'll see. I'm not really sure yet. So this greenhouse, I expect uh, in three weeks to have mushrooms. And then we should stagger greenhouse five and greenhouse two with the rest of our overwinter production. All right guys, so I'll keep you posted on the overwintering throughout the next three weeks. I suspect a lot of this stuff is really gonna work out for us and it's really exciting to get my season started because I'm, I have a lot of limitations to what I can do with, with living in Canada, being a seasonal farm outside. So pushing the season with production that I finished off the season with the follow, or the previous year is definitely a great strategy for us. So don't forget to like, uh, TR's channel at Earth Angel Mushrooms and subscribe to TR and you guys can win a t-shirt just like this.